Deep within the bowels of the earth lies an ancient, undying evil. Centuries ago, the Sami people, having been terrorized by this creature for generations, finally trapped it at the bottom of a frozen lake. They buried that block of ice in sawdust and constructed an entire mountain to entomb it. But nothing stays buried forever. A group of foreign industrialists unearthed the creature, unwillingly setting it loose. This creature has a name. And it's Santa Claus! Merry Christmas! Yeah, it's one day, it's one day though. Mildo, I don't know what to tell you. The world needs horror content even during the holidays. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I would like to spend one day with my family, you know, if convenient for you. Yeah, every year yes, the same thing, and every year it's no more convenient. It's a federal holiday, I'm pretty sure you have to give- Ah, humbug. If it were up to me, everybody who went around with Merry Christmas on their lips should be boiled in their own pudding, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I really don't. Ah, listen, I gotta go. I think I ate a spot of undigested beef or mustard or something. Cause I seen the ghost of my dead business partner, and let me tell you, that guy is dead. Of that there can be no doubt. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, the chief mourner, me, Bobby Duke, star of the channel. Okay, well, can I at least use more coal in the furnace? Okay, he hung up. Rare Exports, a Christmas tale directed by Jelmari Helander, is a 2010 Finnish horror comedy about a small town in the Lapland province of Finland, on the border with Russia. It's being terrorized by oh, Santa oh, Claus. Oh, oh. But this Santa Claus ain't the guy that you know, the jolly fat guy that breaks into your house and gives you presents whether you want them or not. He's more of an ancient pagan demon whose sole purpose in the world is to whip naughty children and then boil them alive in a big cauldron. A guy who's kind of like a Richard Hammond in Jurassic Park type wants to dig up Santa for some reason. He knows this stuff and he's still like, well, I gotta get that Santa Claus. Gotta get him up here and see what that's about, even though I am keenly aware that he will kill people. Make sure everyone has one of these. What are these? It's the new safety instructions. I routinely demonstrate that I am aware of the danger of this scenario, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And at first, that seems kind of illogical. Like, why would anyone want to set this thing free? On a literal level, there really is no good reason, but it feeds into the movie's theme of industry and development, harming local ecology and the traditional lives of the working poor. Yeah, it's gonna be one of those kind of videos. The heroes of the movie are all caribou herders. That's Reindeer to most of you. I say caribou, that's what we call them in Canada. We only really use the term reindeer when we're talking about Santa's reindeer specifically. Fun fact, the word caribou is derived from the Mi'kmaq word kalapu, which translates roughly to snow shoveler. <laughs> Let me tell you, wouldn't mind having a few caribou cleaning out of my driveway, know what I'm saying? Anyway, the livelihoods of the herders are ruined when blasting from the Santa Claus Retrieval Mountain drives the wolves of the area from their normal habitat closer to the village. Also, maybe elves killed the caribous. Most of the Santa Clauses in this movie are actually just elves who are doing the bidding of Santa Claus Prime. He's in a big block of ice the whole movie. You don't really get to see what he looks like. And that bugs me. I wanted to know. This is a distinction that isn't terribly important because they do a lot of Santa related stuff. They hate when people swear, for instance, that's naughty, they'll punish you for that. And they seemingly only eat gingerbread cookies like they just fucking love eating cookies, which is a Santa thing, not an elf thing. I don't know what elves eat, caribou, I guess. The herders are left with no recourse when the environmental impact of the dig site ruins their livelihood. In fact, legally, they can't even talk to the people at the dig site because to do that, they'd have to cross the border into Russia and they would be shot on sight. They're at the mercy of just this one weird rich guy's obsession and then their way of life is destroyed by the literal embodiment of commercialization. It's not a subtle movie. As the protagonist Pietari notes, this is the real Santa Claus. The Coca-Cola Santa is a lie. And he's kinda right. According to folklore, Kova Tinturi, the mountain where they're blasting to get Santa Claus out of in the movie, is the birthplace of Father Christmas, who is kind of like a precursor, but nowadays kind of has come to be synonymous with Santa Claus. The whole whipping and boiling children thing, we wouldn't think of that as Santa stuff typically, but it's loosely based on a bunch of different traditions where Santa has a companion who punishes the naughty children while he rewards the good ones. 
You're probably familiar with Krampus, who has a chance to spawn in place of a devil deal room and drops either a lump of coal in Krampus's head upon defeat. There's also Servant Rupert, who beats children with a sack if they don't know their prayers. And the Bell Snickle, who I thought was a joke they made up for The Office, but is apparently real folklore. Also Zwart Pete, uh, uh, we're not gonna talk about him. The safe and sanitized figure we know today is largely the product of marketing, and just as the caribou herders in the film find their traditional way of life consumed by Santa Claus, so too does this homogenized mass market character rob people of their weird idiosyncratic local traditions. I, I'm gonna get into like sort of spoilery territory at this point. I'm gonna talk about the film's twist ending, which is also likely the only thing most people know about it. To hear people talk about this movie, the last five minutes is the entire thing. Regardless, if you want to skip the spoilos, there should be a timestamp appearing now. At the end of the movie, once Santa Prime has been totally explodified, the elves become docile and tame. With an army of immortal mindless Santa Clauses, the locals train them to behave like the mass market Santa Claus we're all familiar with, and start shipping them off as literal commodities internationally. Hence the title of the film, Rare Exports. The good guys, the guys we've been following the whole movie, the guys of We Watched Cry about their financial troubles earlier in the movie and try in vain to shield their children from the harsh realities of the world, do not hesitate to exploit the elves when it means they can get rich. The film makes no bones about it. This is not a morally gray thing. It is bad that they are doing this. It's a dehumanizing and cruel process of indoctrination and commodification. The elves are brought into a repurposed slaughterhouse and hosed down like cattle. The elves are forced to mimic genuine human affection for children and explicitly told not to expect a reward for it. So it's like, it's slavery, but I don't think the movie is trying to comment on real life slavery. The elves are more like automatons than people. They don't really have any will of their own and they don't seem to care much what they're doing at any given point. That'd be a real weird take on real life slavery because in real life, people that had slavery done to them do not like it. If you look through history and you look, you, you ask people who were enslaved like how they felt about it, they're like, that's the worst thing that could happen to me. But the elves don't care. Elves are fine with it. And yes, obviously real life slavers portrayed slaves as less than human to justify enslaving them. They portrayed them as incapable of making their own decisions and thus little more than an animal that could be bought or sold. If rare exports were trying to make some extremely literal commentary on slavery, they'd be doing a very bad job of it, is my point. But they're not doing that. That's not what the movie is about, I don't think. See, the elves? are empty, hollow creatures. They do not feel or even understand the sentimentality and wholesomeness they perform. It's just a mindless regurgitation of commands designed to be marketable and profitable. And just months earlier, under a different set of commands, they were perfectly willing to torture and kill children. Now, they pretend to love them for money. The schmaltzy, saccharine, sweet mall Santa act they put on is a product. The same way that every bloodthirsty corporation on Earth makes a commercial about the importance of togetherness and family every Christmas, all the while keeping their employees from spending time with their actual families. The way that Christmas is this special, beautiful day that brings joy to the children of the world when they can wake up and unwrap presents manufactured by other poorer children. Some might say this film is a bit too cynical, but quite frankly, what I think is more cynical is the commercialization it satirizes. The manufactured sentimentality that acts as though it encourages peace on earth and goodwill to man, but actually just sands off the edges of your own traditions and sells them back to you piecemeal. <sighs> Hello? Mildo, what day is it? It's Christmas day, Bobby. Then I haven't missed it. The spirits did it all in one night, Mildo. Here's what you gotta do. Go down to the poultry shop, right? And get yourself the biggest goose you can get on me. I don't eat meat, Bobby. That's not important right now. What's important is I got visited by three ghosts. And now I understand the meaning of Christmas. In, in a secular sense, I'm still Muslim, but uh, it's a joyous day. All this time I've been focusing on being the star of the channel, but the spirits taught me to change my ways. Cause today, Mildo, today, we're all the star of the channel. That's what Christmas is all about. Aren't you a ghost? What do you mean? Cause you're a Babadook. The movie, the Babadook, he was a ghost in that, right? He was like a- It's a metaphor for grief, Mildo. Yeah, I know it's not literal. <sighs> Never mind. Look, happy holidays, Bobby. Happy holidays, Mildo. And you know what? You can't take Christmas off. Uh, I already did the review though. Oh, okay, well, 
then I mean, shame not to edit it, right? I mean, if you already if you already did most of the work. No, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, you might as well keep going at this point because you already you already missed most of Christmas. But you know, I'm I'm changed now, so you can use all the coal you want if it's cold in the office within reason. Cause coal ain't cheap. You can use two pieces today. How about that? Actually, tomorrow you can use two pieces because you know most of the day is over today, so it'd be kind of a waste to use two right now, you know. And actually, about that goose, I'm looking at I'm looking online at goose prices right now. I might have overpromised on that one. 